On October 8, 1970, Matthew Page Damon was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, the second son of Ken Tiefer Damon, a stockbroker, and Nancy Carlson Page, an early childhood education professor at Leslie University. His parents moved to Newton, but divorced when he was two years old, and he and his brother returned with their mother to Cambridge, where they lived in a six-family communal house. As a lonely teenager, Matt said that he felt he did not belong and had a hard time defining his own identity. Damon attended Cambridge Alternative School and Cambridge Ringe and Latin School, where he was a good student. He performed as an actor in several high school productions. He credited his drama teacher Jerry Specka as an important artistic influence, though friend and schoolmate Ben Affleck got the biggest roles and longest speeches. Damon had a minor role in Mystic Pizza and appeared as an extra in The Good Mother and in Field of Dreams. Damon attended Harvard University, was a resident of Lowell House and a member of the class of 1992, and wrote an early treatment of Goodwill Hunting as an exercise for an English class. Damon dropped out a semester shy of completing his Bachelor of Arts in English to feature in Germanimo, an American legend, in Los Angeles thinking the movie would become a big success, but the movie was a box office bomb. He did have a non-speaking role in Glory Days, an independent film that featured several actors and actresses who would become stars in their own right. Damon next appeared in Courage Under Fire, a 1996 American war film directed by Edward Zwick and starring Denzel Washington and Meg Ryan. In 1997, Damon was featured in three movies. Chasing Amy, directed by Kevin Smith and starring Ben Affleck and Jason Lee. The Rainmaker, a legal drama directed by Francis Ford Coppola, and of course, Goodwill Hunting, which Damon had submitted as a treatment for a class at Harvard and now had expanded into a 40 page script. In order to qualify to be included as a low budget review, uh, the DVD or Blu-ray must be priced at below $13.91. There were several options, including a, a $9.99 for a Blu-ray disc. There was a widescreen version available for uh, $20.98, and there was a double featured DVD with rounders for $32.99. Every other version was available for less than $13.91. In any case, I got the Miramax Collector's Series for $7.55. Uh, DVDs were introduced in late 90, 1996 and early, and early 1997, so this movie would have been originally released in this format, if just barely. Um, it was also released on VHS and Laserdisc, but anyway, it seems to qualify for a low-budget review. Mind. This boy's genius is on parallel. And a bad attitude. When you hit an officer, you go in. Now, I need someone who can get through to him. Like me. For the first time in his life, he's met his match. Playtime's over. You lecturing me on life? Robin Williams, Matt Damon. In a film by Gus Van Sant. Good Will Hunting, rated R. This movie opens with Professor Gerald Lambeau, played by Stellan Skarsgård, who is a Fields Medal winner, teaching a class to graduate students at MIT. He posts a difficult combinatorial mathematics problem on a blackboard as a challenge to his students. Will Hunting, played by Matt Damon, uh, who is a 20-year-old self-taught genius who was recently paroled from jail and is working as a, at a janitor at the school, uh, solves the problem anonymously. Uh, Lambeau posts an even more difficult problem. Uh, he later catches Will writing the solution on the blackboard, but initially thinks Will is vandalizing it and chases him off. Later, at a bar frequented by Harvard students, uh, Chucky, uh, f uh, played by Ben Affleck, who is a friend of uh, Will Hunting, uh, is being made fun of by a Harvard grad student, and Will in turn schools him uh, he basically gives an intellectual uh, beatdown. Uh, he also meets Skyler, 
uh, played by Minnie Driver, who is a British woman about to graduate from Harvard and who plans on attending medical school at Stanford and gets her number. The next day, Will and his friends get into a fight with a gang that includes a member who used to bully uh, Will in kindergarten. He is arrested after he attacks a responding police officer. By now, Lambo found out Will's name and attends his court appearance, watching Will defend himself. The judge initially wants jail time for Will, but Lambo arranges for Will to avoid jail time if he agrees to study mathematics under Lambo's supervision and participate in psychotherapy sessions. Will agrees, but treats his therapist with mockery, even accusing one of them of being gay and attracted to him. In desperation, Lambo calls on Dr. Sean McGuire, his college roommate, who now teaches uh, psychology at Bunker Hill Community College. At their first meeting, Will insults McGuire's deceased wife, and uh, Sean threatens him. But after a few sessions, Will finally starts to open up, and McGuire challenges Will's defense mechanisms. McGuire tells a story about how he met his late wife by giving up his ticket at to the historic Game 6 of the 1975 World Series between the Cincinnati Reds and the Boston Red Sox after falling in love at first sight. He claims that he does not regret his decisions. This encourages Will to build a relationship with Skyler, although he lies uh, to her about his past and is reluctant to introduce her to his friends or home. Um, Will also challenges McGuire to objectively examine his own life as he cannot move on since his wife died. Lambeau schedules several job interviews for Will, but he scorns them first by sending Chucky as his chief negotiator and then by turning down a position with the NSA by lambasting their moral position. Uh, Skyler asks Will to move to, to California with her, but he refuses and breaks up with her uh, but not before admitting that he's an orphan and that his stepfather physically abused him. He later storms out on Lambo, dismissing the mathematical research that he's been doing and mocking Lambo and saying that everything is easy for him. McGuire points out that Will is so adept at anticipating future failure in relationships that he deliberately sabotages them to avoid emotional pain. Chucky also challenges Will over his reluctance to taking any of the positions for which he interviews, comparing it to not cashing in the winning lottery ticket, and telling Will that he owes it to his friends to make the most of the opportunities that they will never have. He tells Will that the best part of his day is when he goes to pick up Will and walks up to his door, because there's always the chance that Will is gone and that he has moved on to something greater. Um, Will walks in on McGuire and Lambo arguing about Will's future. Lambo is concerned that he hangs out with friends that he considers retards. Uh, McGuire in turn counters that these retards are his friends and would have his back uh, under uh, like under exigent, exigent circumstances. Uh, soon McGuire and Will find that they were both the victims of child abuse. McGuire tells Will that he was the victim of his own uh, inner demons and helps him accept that it is not his fault, causing him to break down in tears in McGuire's arms. Will uh, takes a job with Nick McNeil, one of the companies uh, with which Lambeau scheduled an interview. Will celebrates his 21st birthday and his friends buy him a Chevy Nova to get back and forth to work every day. Uh, as McGuire prepares to take a sabbatical, Lambeau and McGuire reconcile. Will goes to McGuire's house to deliver a note. In the meantime, Chucky drives up to Will's house. Chucky finds that, to his delight, Will is gone. Uh, McGuire reads Will's note, uh, telling him to tell Lambeau that he has declined the job and that he is instead going to California to be with Skyler. The final scene of the movie has Will driving his Nova on an empty highway as the credits roll. Maybe in reviewing this movie, it would help to breaking it down to memorable scenes. And Good Will Hunting has several memorable scenes. Um, and I can break it down in these, uh, these uh, seven scenes. Um, 
number one, where Will schools Clark is the obnoxious ponytailed Harvard grad student. Uh, he notes that in 50 years, he'll realize that he has dropped $150,000 on a Harvard education that he could have gotten for $1.50 in late fees in the public library. It was, as some have suggested, one of the most celebrated moments in comeuppance in recent film history. Uh, number two, the scene where Will and Sean McGuire meet, where Will insults McGuire's late wife, and McGuire in turn threatens Will. Uh, number three, uh, the sh scene where Will and Sean talk about uh, Game Six of the 1975 World Series and the fact that Sean did not attend the game because he he had met his wife, um, soon to be late wife, but anyway. Uh, scene no number four, the scene where Will sends Chucky. Uh, his chief negotiator to a job interview. Chucky extorts uh, um, $200 from this hapless interviewer. I think he only gets like $73, though. Um, number five, the scene where Will interviews with the NSA and delivers an anti-NSA screed. I love that scene. Um, number six, the scene where, where Sean says that his past abuse at the hands of his stepfather was not his fault. Uh, this, this is a good scene. Uh, and finally, number seven, um, uh, the scene where Damon accuses therapist of being gay and being attracted to him. Uh, here, George Plimpton gets a cameo role. But this movie is more than these individual scenes, no matter how memorable and good that, that they were. Good Will Hunting is an exquisitely written script. If there's a message in this movie, it is that to achieve greatness uh, in spite of the inner demons that may hold us back. Um, uh, for two young men in their 20s, Damon and Affleck brought a, a lot of insight into their screenplay treatment, and their youth ex exhibited some genius. You know, there's, there's some uh, genius in youth, and I think this is part of it. The therapy scenes are especially good. And did I mention that uh, Damon and Affleck won an Oscar for Best Original Screenplay? They deserved it too, and, and you have to wonder like, to what extent they were they were playing on their own. Uh, on their own um, past experiences where, where uh, you know, um, as, like, uh, Matt, uh, Damon said that he, he felt they didn't belong as a, as a child, and, um, so that may have been a factor in it, um, and the show presents Damon as Will Hunting, a self-taught genius with a photographic memory who is nonetheless scarred by the abuse he suffered in foster homes, and this causes him to have an attachment disorder and he can't really form meaningful relationships other than his childhood friends. A judge, figuring that anything is better than prison, orders that he spend time studying math with an M MIT professor and therapy. Uh, this movie basically chronicles their attempts to help Will. In this, uh, uh, Gerald Ram Lambeau, the MIT professor, and Sean McGuire, his therapist, fight. Lambeau sees a prodigy smarter than than himself, uh, and who could be the next Einstein if only they could point him in the right direction. Sean, on the other hand, sees a deeply troubled youth who needs to deal with his inner demons before he can decide what he wants to, to do. Uh, Lambeau resents this as he sees Sean as someone who wasted his genius teaching psychology at a mediocre community college. So this movie presents us with tensions. Will versus Lambeau, Will versus Sean, and Sean versus Lambeau. In other words, tensions between the three main characters. And should we also mention Will versus Skyler, uh, in which a, a, a nascent relationship uh, is, is scuttled because she wants him to move to California with him? Um, the acting of this movie is excellent, and Damon and Affleck hit it right out of the park. Uh, Robin Williams is excellent as Will's therapist, demonstrating that he has the dramatic chops and he completely deserved the Best Supporting Actor Oscar. Um, also, Minnie Driver is good as Skyler, Will's love interest. Gus Van Sant is the director, and this may be the best movie he directed. I like some of the little things he, he, he did in this movie. Uh, for example, when Will Hunting goes out on the same bench where he and Sean met for, for therapy, and also, there's a plane that f flying over that symbolizes the fact that Skyler has has departed. Um, also, Kevin Smith and Scott Moser produced the movie, 
it was just being associated with an award-winning film seems to cast everyone in a favorable light. In short, Goodwill Hunting has a lot working in his favor. A good screenplay, good acting, and good directing. I tried hard to think of some of the negative aspects of this movie, but I, I, I couldn't find any. At least not enough to dock this movie points. Um, and again, I, I'd like to ask some of my more mathematically inclined friends whether the, uh, the, the math was valid. But I, but it, it, I, I was any, unable to do that. So uh, in short, I give this movie a 10 out of 10. Uh, for a movie under $10, Goodwill Hunting has a lot of extras. It has deleted scenes, a production featurette running six minutes and change, a theatrical trailer, and TV spots for the movie. There's also a commentary with uh, Gus Van Sant, Matt Damon, and Ben Affleck. But there's only one commentary track. That, uh, there's no multiple commentary tracks, but, um, but those who want to run through the movie with commentary... Uh, should be enough. Uh, finally, there's a, the Academy Awards Best Picture Montage, a music video, a behind-the-scenes documentary, and an advertisement promoting additional titles. Overall, this is ponderous extra material for those who have a, a, a late 90s nostalgia and who want to get lost in the world of Goodwill Hunting. In conclusion, Goodwill Hunting is an excellent movie. Uh, the DVD has tons of extras, and for seven bucks and change, what's not to like about this DVD? I would highly recommend this DVD. That's it for this DVD review. Um, I already have a DVD picked up for next week's uh, low budget review. And I saw somebody in a podcast talking about the Big Lebowski, so I thought I might do that for the for the the low budget review two weeks from now. Um, so I need to uh, order that. Um, like the review and comment on it, and hit the subscribe button to be informed of the latest low budget review. As always, thanks for watching.